Ooh, it's another video. Sassy footed mugs. All right, check them out. They're pretty sweet. Which one do you choose? Which one, which one, which one? It doesn't matter. I'm gonna teach you how to make your own. Let's get started. First up, throwing the body. Okay, so I've got about 15 ounces of clay, nice round ball, throw it on the wheel. And first thing I like to do is a little pressure down and then running my finger along the bottom to secure it to the wheel. Remember, when you're coning up, you are squeezing, not yanking. All right, so let's speed things up a bit. Once you cone up center, let's talk about opening it up. If you notice, I'm using that groove there, right where on the edge of the clay, for size. That way I can make more about the same size. All right, let's open up down to the bottom. And if you need to, I like using a little bit of a sponge to help me stay centered. All right, relax a moment, pull it up. Okay, if you notice, I go for my shape straight off. And let's call this one milk bottle. Once I get it to an even thickness and the height I want for the amount of clay I have, then I'm all about compressing and getting rid of that excess slip. I like using a metal rib for this. Keep my hands on the inside to keep the shape. I can also monitor how thick things are. Once I get that done, get that little edge. But you know what? We need to go in and do the inside. Oh yeah, I'm using a spoon for that because it's a mug. Get a little bit more bulbous body, but this also helps to get the excess slip on the inside off. That way you have a strong pot. Okay. Get the rim done. I like going for a nice an angle. Feels good on the lifts when you're drinking. Since we don't have a bottom, you just need to release the walls. So when you use your wire tool, just wait until it pops off like boom, right there. Turn it off, clean hands, get it off the wheel. We are ready to go on to the next step. Altering, one slab, three feet. Here we go. All right, once it's all hard, it's time to play. Notice the thickness at the bottom. That's gonna give us a lot to work with. Okay, first up is dividing three feet. I like to go with dividing it in half, and then from there, I can decide where the second foot is. Notice I anchor it down at the first foot, and then I do the second, and then I do the third. Then, I take my tool, notice I'm holding it on an angle, not straight across, and making my sweeping curvy cuts. And I go right before my mark. Then, see, I have a nice angle there too. And then I go right past my mark, and I do another sweeping curve. And then the last one. You can decide how, how deep your curves are, depending on how tall your pot is. I also like to get rid of excess bits and pieces on the feet so that I can get my slab on there nicely. All right, so one thing I want you to do is experiment with the number of feet, with the size of the feet, where the placement is, and the height of your curve. Have fun, make it your own. All right, before I get the slab on there, I'm going to smooth out, shape, make my feet all nice so that it will look as lovely as I want it to look. All right, I want you to know I'm using a mid-range stoneware. It is pretty durable. So when I'm joining things together, I take a toothbrush, some water, and I use that toothbrush to rough up my area, and the water makes it all slippy. Kind of a two for one here. I go all around, get that all going, work it all in. All right, so here is my slab. It has been rolled in all different directions, compressed in all different directions, so that when it shrinks, it shrinks evenly. It's a little thicker than um, I, I really need so that I can move and um, stretch it without breaking it. So I mark where my pot is, I cut it down smaller so that I can then come back and with water, toothbrush, slip it, rough it up, and get it onto the pot. Once I have enough slip, and look at that slippy goodness, let's get it on the pot. And here's where the beauty of the piece of cloth comes in. I will quick 
quickly flip it over. Um, I lift it up. I don't just push it down. I lift it up, rock it into the, the arches onto the foot so that I don't distort it, don't break it. And then that way, once I get that done, see how I'm kind of shaping it. I will roll it into place. This is a little helping to get the sides to curve over, but to press where the um, top, or I should say the bottom of the mug and your slab meet. Get that all nicely done. And then I like cutting down the bottom so that it's more manageable um, and more fun. Uh, it's about maybe a quarter of an inch. You want enough to roll over, but not so much that it looks like it's overtaking your pot. Um, and you can also consider these things with how many feet, how big the feet are, so forth and so on. Once I get that done, I like just going over with a sponge, get rid of any sharp edges. All right, once that's done, I will start rolling my bottom up the side of the wall, a little bit of water, nice amount of drag so that I can move everything around. I do one arch and then I do a second arch. Then I'll come in and do the foot so I can get rid of any gaps. Keep that going. Do the rest of the bottom, make it all fabulous. Okay. Once I get that done, I will get the bottom up against the feet, smoothing it. This is why a slightly thicker bottom will help you to move that around without breaking it. Then you have to consider where the feet are. Do you want them splayed out, straight up and down, tucked in? It's how it sits on the table. Those are the things you need to think about. Once I get to that all figured out, I then smooth out my inside. If your arches are really tall, um, you might feel like you have a odd crevice on the inside. You don't want food being stuck in there. You don't want glazes not quite getting in there. So I will just roll up some coils, dash them in water, and get them into the areas that I feel are not quite as nice as I like on the inside. Then smooth everything out with either a wooden tool or a brush. I also like taking time out before I put a handle on to make my bottom all nice to get rid of any marks I don't like. And I don't worry too much about spreading the different color clays around. I can fix that all up when it's back to leather hard. All right, now let's get a handle on this. Okay, I've pulled a handle. I'll show that another time, but to get it onto the pot, we need to use the toothbrush, a little water, rough it up, and get that area going. And I tend to put my handles on these mugs over a foot. You can decide if you want it somewhere else. Roughed up the side of the wall, roughed up the top of my handle, and now I put it on. I tend to kind of get it on a little light in case I mess up. Notice I use the thumb in the back to keep the wall fine, and now rough up the side of the mug to get the bottom. And once I kind of get that all done, then I will squeeze the excess off, get the bottom done. I'm using a third type of clay for this, a nice terracotta on the black body. So I'm not gonna smush this handle in. I'm just going to get it on nice and tight, but still have that feeling of being on top. All right, so as you can see the other mugs, I've already put some slip on the inside, but I've got three different clays, three different colors, nice naturalness and a fun mug. All right, now it's your turn, get started. Thank you, come again sometime.